Hi, I'm Dr. Corey Rodnick, and welcome to Ask the Chiropractor. And my co-star here, Dr. Rodnick, how are you? Pleasure to be here. I'm doing excellent. How about yourself? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we're both chiropractors in the Midland area here. Uh, we also have offices over in Saginaw, and Mount Pleasant is called Pleasant Chiropractic. Anyway, we're so glad to be here, and uh, today we're going to talk about philosophy. Chiropractic philosophy. Chiropractic philosophy. But before we do that, I heard you planted a garden this morning. I was late this year because it was the weather's been so strange. So wet, you mean? Yeah, and cold and hot, and then cold again. And so I, I wanted to plant some vegetables. I planted some tomatoes, and I have some peppers. I'm going to plant some beans, and some celery, and I have some strawberries that I planted couple of years ago they just keep that coming just back keeps, more and more massive strawberries. yeah they're not like regular and green they're onions super jumbos and then I maybe some zucchini I've done other things and we'll see what the garden turns out until this year I, like I just want to get fresh fruits and vegetables and try to get um, less pesticides less um, processed things and eat healthier eat the rainbow hallelujah and I always thoroughly appreciate that because it's wonderful for me. Okay. So, philosophy. So, first of all, the body is the most amazing thing. It's self-healing and self-regulating. Amazing. Right. Just amazing. So, there's about 75 trillion cells all held together by this emanating force. And that force is what keeps all of our cells together. Like you said, self-healing. Let's think about that. It's self-healing when that power, the juice, or whatever you want to call it, is working. Right. If you, if you cut your finger, it'll heal. But if you cut a corpse, it won't heal. Same body, but it's missing the, the life force, that the life intelligence. Force, the intelligence. That's what we're going to talk about today. So that's probably my most exciting thing to talk about. I don't know if you could tell. I can tell you're excited. I get a little zesty in the, uh -huh. Yeah, It's so cool because the difference between a dead body and a live body, there's not that much difference other than that electrical impulse, that, that power, whatever, however you want to call it. We call it in chiropractic innate, innate the innate intelligence. And... Uh, I guess that was originally a, a chiropractic term. and uh, Or the inborn intelligence. It's the same intelligence that takes um, two cells, or really two half cells, and joins them together to form a cell and, and divides and divides and divides, and you have a mass of undifferentiated cells. And that power, the first system that comes out is the primitive nervous system, and that primitive nervous system starts directing the development of the, of the baby in the beginning. So you have this glob of goop all bunch of cells and they're all the same they're all exactly the same every cell is divided is the same and then like Zorro this magic whoosh, appears and is a little, little like a line the primitive streak and uh, that starts directing cells okay you're gonna be a heart cell all of a sudden it turns into a heart cell and that starts dividing and dividing and dividing. So you have two heart cells and four and eight. And this keeps on going, 16, 30, whatever. And not just a mass of heart cells. It's in the form that we need for the heart with the chambers and the, the arteries and veins coming in. And it, it directs everything, not just changing the cells to heart cells. Speaking of the heart, so while the baby's in utero, the magic thing that happens there is you don't want the blood going for oxygen so it has a hole there and that hole doesn't allow the blood to go into the lungs because we don't need the oxygen from the lungs we get it through the placenta we get it through the mama mama supplies the oxygen so while mama's supplying the oxygen this amazing Two cell, four cell, and to a heart makes this hole there so that it doesn't go through the lungs. So there's four chambers. It's only working two at the time, but it develops all of them 
but it doesn't. But use right at them. birth, right after birth, that hole closes up. That hole. That say that again. That hole closes up. There's a hole in your heart, and it closes up instantaneously. It goes and puts a fine, thin layer of hole closing up. Unbelievable. I mean, some people have had trouble with the closings. I know there's a few out there that have, uh, that's like a d disease kind of thing for them, or what would you call it, a condition. But uh, on most people, what is it, like 99 point something percent, it closes up. Immediately on birth, immediately on birth. So as soon as the baby takes that first breath in, that hole instantly closes up. I find that fascinating because you cut your finger, like you said, it takes a certain amount of time for that to heal. Yes? Yes, oh, okay. yes. And if you cut it in a different place, it takes certain time to heal. Not at the same time. I know the top of my hand compared to the bottom, it heals differently. The in my mouth, has anybody ever like bit a hole through their cheek? Yeah, the mu mucous membranes in the mouth, th those heal rather quickly. A couple days later, it's gone. That doesn't happen on my hand. That takes a couple weeks. And under underneath, that might take a month. I was lifting this giant thing the other day, about a month ago. And I cut myself in, in my arms when I grabbed it. I shouldn't have grabbed it so hard. I didn't even know until I got dressed later. And I got, Why am I sliced up here? So anyway, one of them's still there. Like this was like, when was that? Uh, about almost four weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago, and it's still there. So but it takes it's a healing. long time. Yeah, oh, it's, it's healing. still healing. And the of body heals. And I'm not worried about anything. There's no infection or anything like that. But I'm just talking about how long it takes. The heart in that moment instantaneously seals. Like, boom. Anyway, I find that incredible. What else is formed in that um, once you get that primitive streak appearing and doing itself? The uh, the bowels. The liver, the kidneys. The liver. The... Yeah, go ahead. All the organs. Eyeballs. Eyeballs. Big toe. And it's very fortunate that most eyeballs are, are in the same size as the socket they're put in. Yeah. Yeah. How conveniently located. <laughs> anyway. Inborn intelligence. Inborn intelligence. So in chiropractic, we look at the universe as a uh, intelligence. We call it universal intelligence. So this universal intelligence that's governing all matter in all things throughout the universe, keeping the planets rotating, doing its thing, keeping them the right distances apart, that whole, that whole thing is called universal intelligence. And then it breaks it down into people. They call it innate intelligence. So you have universal intelligence, uh, keeping everything in its place, like this table, and, and, the, and, and this is hard it's hard but really it's mostly space this is mostly sp even this metal mostly space a little denser material right you wouldn't think that's mostly space in between these cells so that's called universal intelligence and it's keeping it in its form it's keeping it the way it's supposed to be now in humans we have this universal intelligence coming in and then Innate intelligence is what's sent coming down, but it's also going out. So, so the brain sends messages to the body to tell it what to do, but the body sends messages to the brain telling it what the conditions are. Correct. And then the brain determines what needs to be done. Yes, it does, hopefully. So that's the job of the brain. Now, the brain also goes the other way, too. Have you ever had like a... Here's where it gets weird. Yes, this might be a little weird for some people, but I'm not weird at all for others. So there you go. But it is what it is. So if you ever had the uh, where you'll you'll think about somebody, and then the phone rings and it's them, 
or you'll think about somebody and they knock on the door and and uh you know other examples uh uh i should get my uh umbrella and you look outside and it's beautiful out and you go nah i don't need it and you go out and you get soaked because you forgot your umbrella things like that so that's innate intelligence coming through to the brain and then the brain has to react to it now we have an educated mind and a the uh innate intelligence and an educated intelligence yes i wanted to call your it conscious the and your, your conscious and your unconscious i was thinking autonomic nervous system but yes the autonomic nervous system controls the organs and you do it unconsciously you don't have to think about your heart beating you don't have to think about your lungs breathing it just works automatically. And we have an educated mind, the one that says, okay. Uh, I need to touch this and, and feel if it's hard or not. Right. Innately, you would say, uh, like the autonomic nervous system, you'd say, uh, I'm hungry. And then educatedly, you'll go open the refrigerator, take something out, slice off of something, make yourself whatever, and eat it. And then... The, the brain would no longer be getting signals from the stomach saying I'm hungry. So that's how that kind of, or like the, uh, the, the autonomic nervous system would say, because it got a signal from the kidney who's filtering our blood and says, uh, we need more water. So it sends a signal to the brain, the brain sends out a hormone, your mouth gets dry and you go, boy, I'm thirsty. And then, educatedly, you'll go to the, to the sink, grab a glass, fill it with water, boom bidi bam bidi boom So all the organs and, and work together. The kidneys are controlling your thirst. The kidneys make you thirsty, help make you thirsty, so that they have enough water to do what they need to do. And you, all you would know is, I'm thirsty. You don't know that it went through this whole process to get there. So that's interesting. In itself. Yes, it is. So then you have, so again, you have this universal intelligence governing all matter and all things through the universe. The God source is like, if you're into God, which I happen to be, um, then God is actually bigger than universal intelligence. You, some people say universal intelligence is like God, except God's even more. But anyway, universal intelligence would be similar to, you know, or, or you could relate to it that way. And then innate intelligence is that special intelligence that's within human beings that you can uh, communicate back up to universal intelligence. And universal intelligence can communicate. But you have to turn into the right station. So some days you'll notice you're a little bit more uh, spiritual, you could call it. Or you're a little more... Uh, innately in tuned or maybe uh, there were ESP people or whatever you call them I don't know but in every religion has something some word for that uh, but in chiropractic again it's innate intelligence and that communication network some people are tuned in more than others some of not tuned in so it's kind of like a radio station and you turn it to WGOD radio and, and you're tuned in and you're focused on it. But besides focusing on the universal, the innate intelligence focuses on the body itself and helps regulate the whole body. Yes. Control and regulate the body. Which that's what they call like the... Uh, innate intelligence. The whole medical profession is into homeostasis. And they're trying to control that homeostasis so that they uh, are able to uh, regulate it. And they're trying to regulate it through medicine or through different circumstances or different gear and different things like that. In chiropractic, we're really trying to get the nervous system functioning. At an optimal. At an optimal. So it's regulating itself. I guess one, we're working with from within but, and they're working from without. But besides just regulating the and nervous system. they're both system, great. Huh? Besides just the nervous system, you also have to supply the body with its needs. Proper nutrition, proper rest, um, exercise, motion. Um. 
How was attitude, that? positive mental attitude. He has a lot the of dream. health and healing. Yeah. Diet, rest, exercise, attitude, and maintenance of the spine. So I was watching last night. Uh, uh, very unusual for me to watch something like this. It was a space thing. I think it was on, I don't know, HBO or one of those places. And uh, it was about the space station. Our space station. The International Space Station? Yeah, one. That's the one. And it was very cool. Like we sent up uh, supplies and it blows up. It went spinning. And then the Russians sent one up and it exploded. And the Japanese sent one up and they got the, finally they got some, they were getting a little nervous there. A couple more of these doodads not working. They're up there with no food or anything. So it's kind of cool. It's very cool. I enjoyed it. You know, it wasn't my norm. It was a documentary, which is fun sometimes. And then, and then every now and then, it didn't have a lot of action. I need more action in this show. Arr. Anyway, uh, it was very cool. I enjoyed it. So there you go. And it's just like, you know, the human body, think about this. So we have maybe 7 billion people at coordinating the uh, communication with those human beings on this planet and how difficult that might be. Think about your own body. 75 trillion-ish cells all held together by that emanating force from the brain and down And all working the in coordination. All working in coordination. When to, when not to, blah, blah, blah. Unbelievable. It's just, again, to, the, to me, it's unbelievably amazing how that works. So, so you have the universal intelligence communicating on down, and then we receive it. Okay, or we're getting information from down below, you know, anywhere from the brain on down, wherever it goes to, coming back up. And that's communicating at about 75,000 cycles per second in women. Fast. 72,000 cycles per second in men. It's fast, very fast, very, very fast. And it's back Some and signals, forth. there's different speeds for different signals. Tell me about it. Like pain is a slower signal. So some really? I always thought that was super quick. Not quick enough. <laughs> well, some pain is quick when you have to respond quickly. Sometimes you even respond before it gets to the brain. It's like an automatic reflex. You touch a hot iron and you pull your hand back. It, it makes the decision before it even gets to the brain. When it's a life-threatening or a dangerous situation. So what are the real fast ones then? Pain's the slower ones. You said uh, pain wasn't even a super fast one. Well, chronic pain is a slower one. Ah, okay. It switches its kind of signal. Ah, I'm glad chronic pain's slower. That's helpful. <laughs> what would be a fast signal? I know this water drinking thing, this kidney, that seems to me slow as molasses. That doesn't respond that quick. Because by the time I'm thirsty, I'm already dehydrated. Me, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm sure that, you know, practicing. I know the military, they were making them drink two gallons of water a day. I'd, be in, the, in I'd be in the bathroom all night. Constant, right? Well, not if I was in Iraq sweating, I might not. Well, here's something. When I was doing the mission work over in Panama, they were having me drink like the, they would bring me water like every couple like every ten minutes, so I'm drinking gallons of water. And the interesting thing is they I were never bringing peed. they were bringing hot water. One. What? They were bringing hot water, in in the hot to to cool you off. They would bring you hot tea you know, and stuff. I didn't stuff. even notice. I thought it was like water in bottles or something. But I remember hot water too. Hot it's water like, could be. It's kind of. I don't remember everything. It was like, uh, that was so weird. You know, it's adjusting thousands of people, which to me is like impossible when I think about it. But there it was. <laughs> anyway, it was crazy. But, uh, yeah, I would drink so much, and I never had to go to the bathroom. Because you were sweating it out. I was, oh, soaking wet. Oh, my God. 
I was dripping soaking wet, like soaking wet. And uh, we were doing a, t a technique there. It was a Gonstead cervical chair, which is uh, uh, a lot of people probably are getting adjusted from chiropractors using different Gonstead methods. Gonstead was uh, in Wisconsin, and uh, while he was working there, they built an airport. And a they, hotel. And hotels. and, and uh, To accommodate his patients. And, and an airfield to accommodate his patients. Yeah, they would go there. They'd live there for a couple of weeks. He'd fix them up and ship them back out. And uh, to the tune of thousands. Yeah, they had a whole hospital, chiropractic hospital there. And uh, kind of neat. Anyway, so the, the technique he used for adjusting the cervical, the neck region, uh, he would uh, sit him in a chair. And we were doing this chair thing. And it's a lot faster as far as uh, <clears throat> doing the low back and the, and the middle back and, you know, checking. You know, we checked a lot. I remember one day I did, uh, my, my biggest day there, I saw 2,000 people in one day. So a lot of people. Which is crazy. And they were getting good results, too. And, and I, I, I adjusted, like. Uh, people coming back and testifying how, how their lives were. Oh, it was were amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the government was there doing their thing. And, uh, I mean, the first patient we did there was... The governor's daughter. The governor's daughter, which she gets out. She's, she's on the radio in the morning. She went nuts. Her kid was so sick, burning up with a fever, just sick as a dog. And uh, we adjusted her. And, like, within maybe three, four seconds, she's totally back to how she normally would be, running around kid, happy, jumping around. It went from total, oh, don't touch me, leave me alone, to woo. Anyway, and that happens quite often, actually. I mean, we've seen it, like, as a chiropractor pretty often. Not every time, but uh, depends, you know. Anyway. Body, body self-healing, self-regulating. Yeah, that one was a quick one. Just like I said, the heart can form a wall, boom, just like that, and the heart functions. So... Uh, let's wrap this up with chiropractic philosophy. So, again, here it is, that picture. The brain sending signals down the cord out to every organ, every cell in your body. Pretty amazing. So you can eat a McDonald's French fry one day, and the, and the next day you got new eye cells. Go figure. <laughs> That's how this works. I, don't, I would recommend, you know, some green leafy vegetable rather than, but I'm not trying to get into that. So tune in. What I'm trying to say is I try to do this as often as possible, uh, trying to tune in to WGOD radio. So how do you tune in? You have to tune out first. You've got to tune out of everything else. You can't be thinking about, oh, I've got to get gas. I've got to pick up my laundry. I've got to feed the dog. And say, okay, God, what's next? You know, that it doesn't work that way. You got to be clear, happy, can't be negative. You know, angry people, they, they don't really tune in well. And uh, so that's what I Gra do. Gratitude. And an attitude of gratitude. Attitude yes, of absolutely. gratitude. Absolutely. You know, there you go. So work on the dream, diet, rest, exercise, attitude, maintenance of the spine. Keep working on those things. And uh, again, the medicine is there for emergencies, and it's there to put the fire out if your uh, house catches on fire. But it's good to have a carpenter in there to keep things rebuilding. You don't want to just stay there. you know. So they're all good. They all have their purpose. They all have their places. And we just need to keep working on ourselves. It's a constant battle. Yes, indeed. So God gave you the gift of life. And what you do with that life is your gift back to God. So get out there and serve and uh, love and give. And uh, that's basically the major premise. Anything you want to say? That about covers it. Dr. Thank you. Tony Rodnick, I just always love and appreciate you doing these things. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And thank you, Midland. We'll uh, see you next month at Ask the Chiropractor.